So in this unit, uh, when we talk about linear systems, we're going to talk about three different ways to solve a linear system. Uh, we're going to solve it graphically, and we're going to solve it algebraically. Now, uh, when we solve for it algebraically, there are two different ways to do it. You can solve by a method called substitution or a method uh, called elimination. So the first technique we're going to learn is called substitution. Uh, before I show you substitution, I just want you to, to uh, look at these, I don't know what you call them, these puzzles, I guess. Uh, you, you see them in these puzzle books. And I used to do this as a kid, actually, a lot. Um, but this is basically uh, the method of substitution in a nutshell. So um, what we have here are uh, uh, scales, and they're showing you uh, that the left side and right side are balanced, so they, they have the same mass. So I know that two kittens or two cats is six kilograms and three cats is one dog. So hopefully um, you can see that if two cats is six kilograms and one cat is three kilograms, and if I know that one cat is three kilograms, then the dog must be nine kilograms. It's okay if um, that was too fast. We're actually going to show the steps uh, later on, but that's the logic. Okay, so let's see. Let's write that down somewhere. So cat is 3 kilograms and dog is 9 kilograms. Oh, oops. Dog is... Yes, dog is 3 kilograms. Um, yeah, and you have to understand all these cats are clones of one another. They have to weigh exactly the same. All right, let's see what we have here. We have two dogs is 7 kilograms. So based on this scale here, we know that one dog must be three and a half kilograms. Okay, what about the cat? So if the cat is, um, the cat plus one kilogram is the dog. So if this is 3.5, and this is cat plus one. I'm hoping you can piece it together. If it's cat plus one, then the cat must be 2.5, because 2.5 plus one is 3.5. So 2.5 kilograms. All right, let's keep going. Last one here. Okay, so, hmm. I know that uh, from the first scale, a dog is a uh, cat plus one kilogram. So hopefully you realize that I can replace these two dogs with this information. A dog is cat and a kilogram. So if I can cancel out these two dogs, and uh, I'm not a very artistic person, so I'm gonna do cat and one kilogram, and another cat and one kilogram. So from the first scale, I know that a dog is a cat and one kilogram. So I basically replace that the, the dogs with that given information. So I now have three cats and two kilograms. So three cats and two kilograms, this is four. So that means three cats must be two kilograms. If three cats is two kilograms, then one cat is three. So two over three, two over three kilograms. Hopefully you can see that logic. Don't worry if, you, if, you, if you're having a really hard time with that. We're gonna use the variables later on and show all the work. This is just like a little game where we're, we're playing to help prepare us for the actual math. Um, and the dog, so if the cat is two-thirds, it'd be one and two-thirds. So that'd be, you can write one and two-thirds, or you can say five-thirds. Okay, I really want to emphasize, I, I don't really, uh, I'm not really interested in your ability to find the mass of the dog or the cat. What I'm actually really interested in is the strategy uh, we were using to find the mass of the dog and the cat. Okay, the strategy, okay, because it's basically what we're going to do is called substitution. Okay, so the strategy here is use information 
about cat and substitute to find mass of dog or vice versa okay so you use information about the cat okay so i don't know for the first example you learned that the cat was um, three kilograms and after that you're able to tell yourself oh if the cat is three kilograms then the dog must be nine kilograms so you use that information and you substitute it in okay now the third example is a little trickier you learn that from the first scale the dog is a cat and one kilogram and you substitute that substituted that information and that enabled you to solve for the mass of the cat and once you have the mass of the cat you can go back and solve for the mass of the dog okay so you either use a piece of information about the dog and substitute to find the mass uh, the mass of the of the cat or the other way around so uh, we're going to do the exact same thing but instead of using pictures we're going to actually uh, have the have the linear system written out and we're going to do the algebra okay so d equals 3c and 2c equals 6. Uh, believe it or not this is actually exactly the same as our first dog and cat example so a dog is three cats or the same mass as three cats and the two cats is equal to six kilograms um you know what i'm going to label the equations here so if 2c equals 6 and we divide both sides by 2 then c equals 3. so we're going to let c equals 3 for the first equation because if you let three uh, c equals 3 then you can solve for d bam there you go you have c you have d so c d is three nine let's try next one label our equation so we have equation one equation two so equation one is very nice because it's telling me that d is equal to c plus one I can easily substitute that substitute that information okay you'll realize that if you want to substitute a piece of information you need a variable which is isolated okay so sub equation one into equation two by doing so you'll see something beautiful so instead of writing 2d we're going to write 2 times c plus 1 all of c plus 1 plus 3c equals 12 and look at that this when you see this you should get really excited because when i see this i'm like oh yeah grade 9 math okay you don't you no longer see two variables now you after the substitution if you do it correctly you should only see one variable and we see one variable bam 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 grade 9 math rearrange linear equation solve okay so distributive property good practice for your grade 9 math solve this equation nice c equals two halfway there now a lot of students stop here there's you cannot stop that's only half the solution to linear system so now we have to solve for the other half let's c equal two for equation one now here you can actually sub it into the first equation or the second equation does it matter definitely not okay uh, but saying that you should use the first equation because uh, you'll you'll find the right answer uh, more efficiently so d equals 2 plus 1 which is 3 uh, but like i said if you chose a second equation you'll get the same answer you'll get d equals 3. so the solution to the system is 2 3. okay so substitution if you do it uh, correctly you'll be able to solve for c and once you have c you can solve for the other half of your solution which is uh, d equals 3. all right let's try uh, question c here so for c this is not as pleasant to solve as uh, compared to b because if you look at this system 
I don't have a single variable isolated. Okay, so what I I I'm, I can't this this system is not readily designed for substitution, which is fine because now I have to isolate the variable. You can take the first equation and isolate d, or isolate c. You can take the second equation and isolate d, or isolate c. Now, uh, the last thing I would probably do is take the second equation and isolate for d because then I'll introduce some. Uh, some rational coefficients because uh, you'll end up with half c and uh, I don't want to do that so I would recommend you to isolate for d or c in the first equation or isolate c in the second equation I would personally not isolate for d in the second equation but saying that you can definitely do it and you'll still get this get the correct answer as long as your algebra is correct but we really want to uh, make the uh, make our lives easy here so I'm going to isolate for uh, D in equation 1 so D minus C equals 1 so D is equal to C plus 1 so I'm going to call this equation 3 equation 3 is our friend but saying that I really want you to understand equation 3 and equation 1 are identical they're the same equation they look different but they're the same because some students they go crazy they, I, they substitute equation 3 into equation 1. You cannot do that. That's the same equation. There's, there's no um, added information by uh, isolating D and forming equation 3 and subbing it back into equation 1. What you want to do is take equation 3 and substitute in equation 2. Please do, don't, do not take equation 3 and sub it to equation 1. Then you'll be going in circles. It's the same equation, 3 and 1. They look different, but they're the same. All right, so with that said, hopefully you don't do that on the test. And then distributed property, solve for C. Oh, C is 2 thirds. What do you know? So, uh, I'm going to let c equal 2 thirds for, I can sub it in the equation 1, 2, or 3 to solve for d. But I'm going to choose 3 because that one seems very friendly. 2 thirds plus 1, so d is 5 thirds. Therefore, the solution is two-thirds five-thirds I believe this is the same system as uh, that last dog and cat example okay let's try this one here 3d uh, equals 5c minus 1 and 2d equals 7 plus c so this system is not set up for us to solve by substitution so we have to do some legwork here uh, you can isolate C or D in either equations, but saying that, the best thing to do is isolate for C in the second equation. That way you don't have to introduce any uh, rational numbers here, any fractions. So 2D equals 7 plus C. So C equals 2D minus 7. Let's call it equation 3. And please don't take equation 3 and sub in equation 2 because 3 and 2 is really the same thing. You can take equation 3 and sub it into equation 1. So 3d equals 5 times all of 2d minus 7. Perform the substitution. So don't cc anymore. It's 2d minus 7 minus 1. Okay. Grade, to, grade 9 math. Okay, so 7d is 36. Okay, so d is equal to 36 over 7, and now we just need to solve for c. So let d equal 36 over 7 for, I can choose a sub in equation 1, 2, or 3. Uh, I think the best choice would be equation 3. Make our lives really easy because C is already isolated. So once you sub in D, you can solve for C rather quickly. You don't have to rearrange at all. So D equals 2 times 36 over 7 minus 7. 
Just quickly check this. 23 over 7. So, the solution to our system, 23 over 7, 36 over 7. Beautiful. And I really like this example because the, this emphasizes why solving by substitution is superior to solving by graphing. There is no way a student is able to tell me this is a solution to the system when they were solving graphically. Not in a million years, right? So that's why I prefer solving a system algebraically because you'll get these beautiful answers that you probably would never be able to do graphically. Okay, uh, so this is the first of two methods which we're going to explore to solve a linear system. And this is called substitution.